Hi guys, I'm Ahana and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing how I got my first users for my early stage startup. If that sounds good to you, then keep on watching. I am often asked by founders, how on earth did you get the first sort of hundred or thousand users for your company? as oftentimes really getting from zero to one is the hardest part and I totally empathize with that struggle. It can seem like a really vast problem and there's no single playbook that you can follow a set of rules and you get users. And so I wanted to share a bit about how I did it for my social community app. And hopefully some of the tips and tricks that I use to get my first users can help you too. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Point number one and you're probably not gonna like this, but begging and pleading with friends and family. Now, there's no two ways about it. Nobody likes begging for things, but you have to kind of be willing to go out on a whim and ask people for favors. In the really, really early days, I drafted out three separate messages. The first was for family, the second were for friends that I'm close to, and the third was for friends that I'd kind of lost contact with. And I know some people have mixed feelings about calling on friends when you need something from them. But to be honest, you're putting the ball in their court. As long as you're building something that's adding value to the world around you, whether they want to give their time or not is up to them. But you as the founder, you as the person that's bringing this idea to life, it's your job to find whatever way necessary to get this to market. And one of those is just asking people for help. So I went as far as to reach out to even friends that I probably haven't spoken to in about 10 years. And of course it's not pleasant, of course some of them don't respond, but importantly, the ones that do, and you only need a couple, they, one, create a viral loop, but two, it's actually a really nice personal experience. You can reconnect with people from your past, and oftentimes the conversation is what you're working about, and that in itself just creates more opportunities. So I would really recommend that the very first port of call is to call on your friends and your family. The second thing I did once I'd exhausted all of my friends and family members was go to online communities. Now, this will depend on what you're building, but for us, we're building a skincare app. So I needed to find a place that people who are into skincare congregated. Now, this was in the peak of COVID, so I couldn't just walk into a skincare shop. I had to go online. And fortunately, having suffered with skin issues myself for so, so, so many years, I already knew where to go because I had personally engaged with a lot of these communities before. So the main places that I went to were Facebook and Reddit. The term that we use for these places is watering holes. So in the same way that animals congregate around watering holes, these places are people that whatever niche you're looking into also congregate. I know it's a little excessive, but I was probably already part of around 100 Facebook groups centered around skincare in some way, shape or form. What I did is I drafted out a message asking if people would have just conversations with me about their skincare. Remember, this was the super early days where we didn't have an app, we didn't have anything to sell, we just wanted to find potential first customers and do customer discovery interviews to really synthesize our idea and start testing some assumptions. So I drafted messages and I didn't get it right the first time. My initial idea was just to post in these groups and surely like as people did with my other posts, they'd respond and we'd go from there. However, a big problem with some of these online communities is that you're not allowed to self-promote, which makes sense, right? That's totally fair. But this is why the way that you phrase that post is super, super important. When I came at it as, look at me, I'm building an app and I'm gonna solve all your problems, that didn't go so well and more often than not, the moderators of the groups didn't actually allow me to post that or if they did, they swiftly removed that post because it came across in a more self-promotional way. So what I did instead was really framed it as, look, I myself am a long-term acne sufferer, I'm always on different medication and I'm just looking to connect and talk to other people who have similar problems or similar stories that they want to share. And when I phrased it that way, of course I still had an agenda, but at the end of the day, I didn't feel too bad about it because what we're building will benefit that very community and you gotta do what you gotta do in order to get your face in front of people. So I, I phrased things that way, even still with a more kind of gentle phrasing, it got flagged as self-promotion. So in those cases, there were two other tricks I had. 
The first was actually messaging the admins who ran those pages. And rather than again go for this like calm, gentle approach, I would explain to them very honestly and very genuinely that look, this is my background, I have a physics degree, I write code and I want to build this app for this community because I care deeply and we're not even gonna be making money from it to begin with. So this will really just benefit your audience and that's why I want this post in your group. Now, this was met with two types of response. One was really hateful and abusive and people were very angry at me for invading their DMs with spam. However, on the other hand, people who actually took the time to read that message, they themselves as admins posted on behalf of me in their own groups. Meaning that not only did I get the regular amount of visibility, it got pinned in some of these communities as the admin post, and some of these communities had 20,000 plus members in them. So it was fantastic visibility, and even just getting into one of those groups can fill your entire customer discovery journey. So I thought it was definitely worth doing that. Now, the very last thing that I did is that for the groups where I wasn't allowed to post or I was rejected by the admin or ignored by them, I would respond to comments asking if I could take conversations further. Again, mixed responses, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, but it was certainly less frequent that the comments would get removed as spam or as self-promotion. So it's one last thing to try if all else is failing. The other thing I made sure to do is after doing each and every customer discovery interview, I would ask that person who else they knew that was into skincare that would be down to have a conversation. Because I myself, as I said, have been in the skincare space as a consumer for so long, most of the times the conversations were actually really pleasant and friendly and I'd build a relationship with the people I was talking to and more often than not, some of the people that we did customer discovery interviews and eventually beta testing with are now some of my friends and I talk to them about everything. So I made sure to try and build that rapport, build the personal relationships such that people felt comfortable actually saying oh yeah I have a friend who's also into skincare I think they'd be happy to talk but I was very diligent about it and, and maybe borderline a bit pushy as well so at the end of the conversation rather than saying do you know anyone that's into skincare I would just phrase it as who do you know surely you've got some other friends that you talk about skincare with do you think they'd be interested in a chat and then again you're putting the ball in their court but you're still raising visibility for yourself and even if the friend doesn't agree ultimately they're still likely going to be now some people talking about you and your company in the space that you're targeting. The third thing that we did to get more initial users were incentive schemes. So we were very, very fortunate to partner with a fantastic skincare nutritionist who works with people with skin issues and kind of practices functional medicine and sorts their skin from the inside out. So in a collaborative effort, we made a nutrition guide, a guide for glowing skin, and we did all the graphics and kind of put it together and she provided the information and, and the content behind it. And for the first 500 users that signed up, they would also get this guide for free. So it was another small thing that moved the needle a bit. It involved a bit of marketing, but other incentive schemes like this, where you're giving users instant gratification, if that's not coming directly from downloading your product, which at the time our app really had no dopamine in it and we were still working on that user experience. It was one of those things that gave users some instant gratification and moved the needle. Along the same vein of the nutrition guide, we also ran the Skinfluencer Challenge. Now, this was an incentive scheme for micro-influencers in the skincare space who were looking to really kickstart their careers as a skincare influencer, join the first real social platform for skincare, but also build trust and credibility with their following as a big, big problem with the skincare market and the way things work today is that there's so little transparency and so much content is sponsored that oftentimes people can't even trust their favorite influencers anymore because they're recommending products that they've never even used. Whereas with Clear, you're logging your routine every day and you're not really incentivized to lie about your daily routine because that only affects you negatively. If you put in your real data, we can actually help you figure out what you should be using with your progress pictures and the products that you're putting in. So you're not incentivized to lie about the, the products that you're using on a daily basis. So equally, if you start posting about a product that you've been sponsored to post about, users can see that. Users can see if you've actually used this product or not and how consistently you've been using it. So for the micro-influencers who tend to have a lot of integrity and for them that credibility aspect is so important, joining an app like this was really attractive for them. So as a team, we created this website where we explained what the challenge was and then we just sent out a bunch of DMs on Instagram and TikTok. At the time, you could message people who weren't following you. 
just saying what this challenge was and we'd love if you could take part. The way this worked is that if they could get 100 of their existing followers from their Instagram or TikTok onto Clear, they'd get a blue verified tip on Clear itself, which, you know, as we grow and scale as a platform as well, will give them even more credibility in addition to being able to share their routine publicly with their audience. And this worked really, really well because once we found people to engage in this challenge and share their skincare routine with their audience, that meant that they were actually doing some of the work to help get us those initial users. And the fifth and final thing that we did is played into existing user behaviors. So again, I know a lot about skincare. I have spent way too much time watching YouTube videos on these online communities, mainly on Facebook groups. And I know what a lot of the existing behaviors are. So for example, people are often trying to share the products that they use. So they might do this by saying, I use X, Y, Z, or they might add links to all the products they use, or they might take pictures of the products or create a quick video. But all of these are quite high effort solutions. But what it did prove to me is that people want a way of sharing their routines. We can do that really easily on Clear. And so knowing that piece of information actually impacts the product decisions that we make. So we're building a feature where you can share your routine with a link to your socials. And that way we're taking an existing behavior and just making it that little bit easier. Similarly, we found that dermatologists actually waste a lot of time in their consultations because their patients are either scrolling through their camera roll trying to find their progress pictures or their patients can't quite remember the names of the products that they've used. But with Clear, all of that's actually in one place. You've got your progress pictures, your daily routine, morning and evening, and any prescriptions that you've been on as well. And so it was actually a dermatologist that asked us if they could just have this sent to them in an email format and that way they can kind of have a quick way of accessing what someone that's come in that may not have their record on the system has actually been doing to their skin. And so again, that was an existing behavior that was there. We just sped up an existing process by building an export routine button. And that then created another network of dermatologists who were using this tool because it was free for them and it actually saved them time. So it was really about just tapping into the existing behaviors that are out there and using technology to leverage what you're building and, and leverage these viral loops. So those are my top tips for getting your first users. I just wanna say that I know how hard and sort of daunting it can feel when you're at that stage, but I promise you that if you're diligent about it and you really try, and it's not easy, don't get me wrong, it involved a lot of begging, pleading, being offended by people not responding, being offended by hurtful messages when people said I was spamming them, and honestly, it was all worth it. It enabled me to build what I think is truly gonna change the skincare industry. And so getting over that initial hump is the hardest part because once you're through that, you start seeing which features are really drawing people in and you start getting closer to product market fit and the decision making actually becomes not that much easier, but a little bit. You know, when you're going from zero to one, it's really hard to know where do I even get one user from? How do I know which feature to build of all the hundreds that I could? And so just make sure that you're really trying everything to talk to your users. But to recap quickly, the top five things are to ask friends and family, find your watering holes for your niche, build partnerships with people in your space, use incentive schemes, and play into existing user behaviors. All right, well, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed this video and wanna see more content just like this, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. All right, that's all for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next